Hi, in this video, we shall be discussing Pythagorean trigonometric identity, the double angle formula, as well as solving trigonometric equations. The question goes, in part A, by squaring sine square x plus cos square x, or otherwise, show that sine to the power of 4x plus cos to the power of 4x equals to 1 minus half sine square 2x. And that's a 3 marks question. In part B, Hence, find the values of x for which sine to the power of 4x plus cos to the power of 4x equals to 3 over 5 for the range of x from negative 3 pi over 2 to 2 pi inclusive, and that is a 3 marks question. Now, you might want to pause this video to give this question a try, and when you're ready, keep watching. Now let us begin this question. Uh, as you can see that we need to do a sine square plus cos square x. So by sine square plus cos square x, we are referring to the Pythagorean trigonometric identity in this case, where sine square x plus cos square x equals to 1. At the same time, in the proving equation, we realize that on the right side, we have a double angle of 2x, and on the left, we have a single angle of x. So we either need to convert from a single angle of x to a double angle of 2x or from a double angle of 2x to a single angle of x in this case. So in any case, we need to use a sine 2x formula for double angle. So stating the double angle formula, in this case, we have a sine 2x will therefore give us a 2 sine x cos x. With these two formulas in, in place, we can then continue to prove our part A equation. So for, for part A in this case, on the right hand side, we have a half or 1 minus half sine square 2x. And in the next step, I'm going to change out the 1 in this case. 1 is the same as, so 1 is the same as sine square x plus cos square x. So 1 is the same as sine square x plus cos square x. So why did I put in a bracket square is because 1 square is the same as 1. So it doesn't matter here. In fact, the question wants us to do a squaring of sine square x plus cos square x. So we have to do a squaring right now. So 1 square is the same as 1. So therefore, we can put in a sine square x plus cos square x, the whole thing, power of 2. At the same time, half sine square 2x. Sine square 2x. Sine 2x is the same as sine 2x, 2 sine x cos x. So sine 2x, I change it to 2 sine x cos x. Because of the sine square here, the whole trigo functions must therefore be a square. And the half remains on the outside like this. With that, in our next step, we're going to do a simple expansion. If we square the sine square x, we will get a sine power of 4x. If we square the cos square x, we will have a cos power of 4x. Your middle term, because it's a square, we have a 2ab. So we will have a 2 sine square x cos square x. For the other part in greens, the half over here. Now, over here, we have a 2 squared. 2 squared times 2 squared will give us a 4. 4 times a half will therefore give us a 2. So therefore, we have a minus 2 like this. At the same time, when I square the sine x, it shall give us a sine square x. When I square the cos square x, it shall give us a cos square x. So over here, the next step involves sim simplifying the equation. So sine to the power of 4, 4x plus cos to the power of 4x shall remain because that is what we want to prove in the left side of this equation. 2 sine square x plus cos square x minus away 2 sine square x cos square x will be cancelled off like this. So leaving us with the sine power of 4x plus cos power of 4x and that is exactly what they want us to prove. And so you equate it to the LHS representing left hand side and put a bracket shown. And that's the answer for part A. Alright, now let us begin our part B answer. In this case for part B, we are asked to solve sine to the power of 4x plus cos to the power of 4x equals to 3 over 5 for the range of x from 3 pi over 2 to 2 pi inclusive. Now let me shift this whole thing up. Now, as you can see in this question, is that um, sine to the power of 4x plus cos to the power of 4x is 
exactly what we have in our part A left hand side. So therefore to say that in our part A right hand side like this, I'm going to copy down this because this equation, this part here, this expression is the same as this. That means to say we can now change this part into this in this case. So changing into here, we will have a 1 minus half sine squared 2x like this. So therefore, I want to make sine squared 2x the subject. That means to say I'm going to shift this thing to the right. I will have a 1 minus 3 over 5 to give us 2 over 5 and a times 2 should give us a 4 over 5. So sine squared 2x equals to 4 over 5. Now this is a sine squared 2x. This means a sine 2x, the whole thing power of 2. So what I want to be doing is to simplify until you have a sine 2x. That means to say I need to take a square root to the left as well as a square root to the right. So by square rooting the both the left and the right hand sides, you will end up having sine 2x on the left and on the right, I will have a 2 divided by root 5 like this. Now because you are taking a square root, let's not forget to include the plus minus sign here. Also, one thing to take note is that the original equation has a single angle of x, therefore the range is expressed in single angle of x. But in our manipulator equation, we have a double angle of 2x. Our angle now needs to change from x to a 2x. In order for that to happen, the 3 pi over 2 must therefore be times 2 to give us a 3 pi. The 2 pi must therefore be times 2 to give us a 4 pi. So always remember, remember to change the original range to the range that we wanted. How do we know whether to change the range or not? Just look at the angle, it should tell us a lot of things in this case. So once we have the angle like this, we might, we might want to find the basic angle alpha. So over here, basic angle alpha, also known as reference angle alpha, to do that, we take a sine inverse of 2 over root 5. Sine inverse of 2 over root 5. Take note, when you are finding basic angle alpha, sine inverse of 2 over root 5, you are not supposed to include a negative with the 2 over root 5. It will always by default a 2 over root 5. With the basic angle there, we can then start to draw a quadrant diagram on the left side of this screen. So let me start by drawing the x, y axis and we can then proceed to finding the range or the angles like this. So let me show you this part here. So the angles of 2x will start from 0 here. So it starts from here. It goes in this direction until here to give us a pi. And it goes again to here. Going back to here should give us a 2 pi. Now because the range is from 3 pi to 4 pi, we are still not there yet. So from 2 pi, now let us continue moving. 180 degrees or a pi like this. So therefore, it should give us a 3 pi. So 3 pi will be in this quadrant, starting from this quadrant here. So I'm going to start from this quadrant here, like this. All right, as well as a 4 pi into here. So it'll be the third and fourth quadrant. So what happens is that what happens is that if I want my angle to be in the third quadrant, how to draw, how do we draw this quadrant? How do we draw the right angle triangle? So first thing, if our 2x ended up in the third quadrant, we draw it like this with an arrow hit. And then we draw the right angle triangle like this. So that means to say the angle it makes between the axis as well as the radius, this is the hypotenuse of it, this is the radius of it. So the angle it makes is known as the alpha, basic angle alpha. So this is our basic angle alpha. So once we have our basic angle alpha, we can then proceed to go on. 2x would therefore be the same as 3 pi in this case, 3 pi which is this line, plus alpha. So we have the first answer out, 2x, equal, 2x equals to 3 pi, 3 pi plus alpha. So this is my first answer. If your 2x ended up in the third quadrant. Now what happens if your 2x ended up in the fourth quadrant? To do that and to avoid confusion, let me undo up this whole diagram to make it a clean state like this. So let me go back. Okay, 
So what happens if my two axes ended up in the fourth quadrant like this? So what happens if my two axes end up in the fourth quadrant? So it starts from here, it goes one full complete circle, it goes to three pi, it's not enough, and it goes up ended up here, the fourth pi here. All right, so it's one complete circle like this. So we're gonna draw a right angle triangle here like what we did for the third quadrant. So my right angle triangle is now like this. So once again, the alpha is gonna be the angle it makes with the uh, x-axis in this case here. So let me draw the alpha like this. So this is not my alpha, all right? This is not my alpha. So as you can see here, to describe this angle, we can do it as a four pi, all right? There's a four pi minus away alpha. So that is my fourth angle like this, four pi minus away alpha like this. All right, that's my second answer, four pi minus alpha, and this is the fourth quadrant. So once we have this, we can key the calculator in this case, three pi plus alpha, where alpha is this answer. That is for two x, for the first answer, for the second answer, 4 pi minus alpha. So the whole thing, when we divide it by 2, this is now my x in terms of radian. And these are the two answers for this part B question. And that's also the answer for this question. Thank you for watching. I hope you like this video and see you in the next one.